Howdy. What's up? Uh, people, today I'll be talking about the stitched look in CSS. I've already done a tutorial uh, on this subject and I was not mighty pleased. I was not very pleased with the, the way I actually handled it. There was a, a there was a, a, a niggling uh, aberration, you know, that was bothering me. I wasn't too happy. Uh, I wanted to create something which was flawless, uh, something that actually pleased me from inside and this is the result. You know, in a lifetime, I'll ne never be able to replicate a better example of using uh, multiple background images. Now, what's happening out here is, even before I talk, uh, take you into the code, let me just give you a gist of it. What's happening out here is, in the previous uh, tutorial, you know, which I thought was, um, had a, a little bit of a flaw, and uh, I'd used borders to get the stitched effect. But you see, what happens with the borders is that you cannot control the dashed, uh, you know, the, uh, the the length of the dashes, nor can you actually control uh, the distance between the dashes. Have you ever tried controlling uh, dashed borders or dotted borders? You know, you you cannot control the size of the dots of the dashes or the distance between them. There's no way. Except probably you might use, uh, you know, uh, border image property. I've not tried that. Maybe, maybe it might work that way. But uh, what I've done is I've created, I've used four images. One, two, three, and four. And I've, uh, you know, I've placed those four images inside an image. Uh, so here is an example of using multiple background images now these images are created in a manner in which I can I have complete control over you know the length of the dashes and the uh, distance between the dashes so you'll say what's what's so great I can do it in Photoshop maybe uh, Adobe fireworks so what's so great it's code controlled people it's purely CSS control the uh, dashes in the distance and I've used linear gradient to do this if I take you through the code there's a there's quite a lot also notice that I've used pseudo elements colon before colon after I've created content before and after the division see uh, in the first part I'll only talk you through very superficially. I will have to have to split the tutorial into two parts for better understanding. For the very super intelligent, for the uh, geniuses, you know, part one should be sufficient. You know, just me giving you an idea uh, how this was handled, and your knowledge will see you uh, ashore. We'll see you through. But for the others, uh, you know, who are new to CSS, maybe moderately new to CSS, know CSS a little bit, you know, they they probably uh, will definitely need uh, part two of the uh, tutorial. In part one, I'm going to take you through superficially, as I said. <coughs> Let's first, uh, you know, I, I'll not do the code all over again in part one. I'm just going to talk you through you know for benefit of guys who actually can self-help who are super good with CSS they can I'm sure they can self-help themselves me giving you an idea and uh, you should be able to do it for the super intelligent guys so you see in the opening and the closing body tags I have a class of denim All right. now let's look at this class Obviously, I need to define the width and the height of my division and a background, a denim pattern. This is the denim pattern, people. Um, yep. And it's been repeated to uh, fill up the division. Some margin on the uh, top and bottom on the and on the left and right. Auto means that you, you'll be centering left and right the division itself. Some box shadow people. Again, I'm not going to get into the detail of the syntax but you can see the uh, box shadow yep notice that I'm going vendor prefix free 
I'm not using vendor prefixes. Why? Because I have a JavaScript file, a JavaScript fallback that takes care of it in the background. I really don't need to bother. In the JS folder, I have a file called prefix free dot min dot js that's gonna take care of me going vendor prefix free fear free fearless go vendor prefix free if you link up to this file through the opening closing script tags after the style tag or anywhere in the document actually right so I have some margin some box shadow I'm setting the position property to a relative for the division with the class denim why because there's some more elements that uh, and they have been given the position property of absolute these are the other two rules they have a position property of absolute once they are placed inside the class denim I can then position them relative to the class denim you see they have a position of absolute now use the colon before colon after pseudo elements they create some content before and after your element actually inside it to be a uh, absolutely true actually inside not outside they they are called colon before and after but they create some content inside the uh, element itself now notice that uh, the content is uh, empty strings old trick people you should understand the colon before after rules a lot better to understand this tutorial it's moderately difficult it's actually quite difficult to understand this tutorial that's the reason I'm I have had to split it into uh, two parts now <coughs> the uh, look at the, the browser preview these vertical dashed uh, border like structures are actually um, linear gradients and they are um, repeating themselves through the background repeat property I've also used the background size property and the background position property. Uh, I don't think so. I need to. I don't think I need these properties at all. Let me just check. Yep. And similarly, I can do away with these three properties too. Thank God that uh, shrinks the code a little bit. Yep, all good. Right. So, uh, creating the vertical dashed lines and the horizontal dashed lines only through the uh, linear gradients. And I've used the two keyword out here at several places. People, this is the uh, latest modern syntax that we use with linear gradients. Um, you know if you don't wish to use it then you, you can uh, choose to exercise your uh, right to choose the old syntax too which is okay because the new syntax with the two key uh, keyword will work only in the most modern browsers but I've, I've just used it to be uh, to align myself to the latest to the most recent uh, in CSS right um, as I said I won't get into the details of uh, how did I create those horizontal and vertical lines through the um, linear gradients which I shall do so in the next part but for people who actually understand uh, linear gradients background size background position and background repeat property should be able to help themselves out just by looking at the code probably Look, I've used the uh, left and top properties out here, out here, okay. So, in a nutshell, this uh, is a background image. This and this dashed line is the result of this rule, colon before pseudo element, and this horizontal line, this vertical dashed line is a result of colon after pseudo element all right so uh, two background images pushed in the first rule and two in the second rule the colon after the colon before and the colon after rule I shall take you through them in the second part in detail from the very beginning you have a good day bye bye peace